if you haven't waked up to the fact already that God is getting the attention of this generation, then you will one way or the other. And I suggest that you wake up to it in the Word of God and in the miraculous presence of Almighty God instead of having to be shook like a dog shaking a rabbit because <laughs> one way or the other it's going to take place and we're right in the middle of it. Praise the Lord. Charles, I want to welcome you to this broadcast, brother. Thank you. Good I, it, it's just so good to have you. I, I, um, Charles and I have been preaching together for a long, long time and, and we've, been, we've been knowing God together for a, a long time. And, uh, you know, the Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy and said, faith words nourish. You need, you need somebody that, that you know and can run around with, that's got faith like you've got and, and that you can walk with and, and preach with, where when you get with one another, all you talk about is Jesus and all you talk about is faith and all you talk about is the Word. And that's the way it is around Charles and me and Jerry and Carolyn and, and all of us and, and uh, Peggy, Charles, his wife. We get together and, and we nourish one another on the word of faith. And now is the time to get so totally committed to God's word and God's way of doing things that you don't have time for anything else. Now, it's been the other way around. It's been where people said, well, I don't have time for the Word of God. I'll tell you, brother, you better make time for the Word of God. Because you know why? Time's all gone, isn't it? Pretty much. Yeah. Time, the way we've known it, is all over. They ain't going to, from here on, from here until Jesus catches away the church, if it's, if it's six months, it's going to be six months like we've never seen before. Right. If it's a year, it's going to be a year like we've never seen before. If it's five years, it'll be five years like nobody's ever seen before. Sure. Because this moment that we're living in is right at the change and the crossroads of the ages. I mean, there ain't nothing ever going to be the same again, is it, Charles? We're in a transition into a new millennium. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people accuse you, well, you just got millennium fever. Why is this millennium any different from any other millennium? Every millennium, there's always the flakes come out of the woodwork and prophesy doom. But we're not prophesying doom. We're prophesying a glorious yeah. church. Yeah. The difference is that this is the last millennium before eternity. Yeah. And uh, people, God's going to get people's attention one way or the other in this generation. I want to talk about that today, Charles. I, I, you know, God has, uh, God has always been uh, free from blame. I mean, boy, you can't accuse God of ever not revealing and not letting somebody know something's going to come to pass. He has always let people know. Now, people don't pay any attention to Him, don't know. But anybody that'll pray and seek God can know what's going on before it ever takes place. And this generation that we live in right now, God's revealing Himself more than any other generation in the history of this universe. And anybody right now that doesn't know what God's going on just because they're not paying attention. And so God always has called specialists when it came time to talk about faith. Well, I'm telling you, he'll call some folks to talk to you about faith. And mm -hmm. you, the people that spend all their time studying faith and realizing and having faith revealed. And the same thing is true with healing. Same thing is true with all the different things that God was restoring to the body of Christ over the years. But now, God, I told Gloria last night, I flipped that television on, and we've got a satellite receiver at home. So uh, that we, I just started across that satellite receiver. And I'm telling you, Charles, almost every other channel, somebody's standing there with a the Bible open <laughs> saying, now, now this, you know, and, and, and I said, Gloria, look at that. I said, everywhere you look, God <laughs> is telling us, you better wake up. You better get your little skinny self ready because it is happening around you right now. 
And a big part of them are talking about the coming of the Lord. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everywhere you turn, brother, yeah. one of them's telling you it's on, and another one's telling you you better get ready. I mean, <laughs> so um, what what God has done here with Brother Caps has uh, called him uh, in in the the time frame that we're in right now and has revealed some marvelous things to him. I, I started picking at him this morning when we first got here. I said, Charles, I, I said, now, you know, I, I got some things that I'm, I'm sensing in my spirit that, and some things that are going on. I said, I want to know from you where, where it is in the Word because I, I knew good and well God revealed it to him. And sure enough, he flipped his Bible open and showed me just exactly what I'd been getting from the Lord, but I didn't, I didn't know yet where it was from the Word. So he saved me a lot of homework this morning <laughs> what he did. Amen. So get your Bible right now. Let's have a word of prayer. And we're going to turn Charles loose on this thing this morning. Praise God. This is the most exciting thing that, that you can get your hands on is to find out where we are in this time frame and just watch it come to pass right before your very eyes. Father, we thank you for the Word. We thank you for the soon coming of Jesus. And we praise you for revelation and the opening of our eyes and our understanding. We receive your word in Jesus' name. Amen. You were, you were talking about, well, I'll tell you what, Charles, let's, let's get into that area of revealing this thing. I mean, yeah. God is revealing himself to this generation uh, like no other generation that I can find out anything about in the Word of God. I mean, I, you talk about revelation coming in, I mean, for everything from newspaper headlines to, the, yeah. to God That's revealing it. the Scriptures to, to er, television shows about angels. I mean, it beats all yeah. I believe I've ever seen in my yeah. life. Yeah. Uh, actually, what God is is doing is revealing things that have been hidden. You know, Jesus said, there's nothing hid that won't be revealed. That won't be revealed. Yeah. And uh, I, I just want to read a scripture in Isaiah uh, chapter uh, 30. Uh, verse 8 says, Now go, write it before them in a table, note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. Now, footnote to that time to come forever and ever. Down here it says, Hebrew, the latter day. Praise God. The latter day. Now, note it in a book. Uh, uh, put it on a, write it on a table. Note it in a book. And it shall be for the latter day. Could that refer to the Bible code? Well, that yeah, it's noted sure. in a book. It is, this is the book. This is the book. But what God is doing, He's getting the attention of this generation. God is revealing to this generation what other generations have sought desperately to know. When the Lord first began dealing with me about this, it was about three years ago. And He said, I want you to teach on end time events. And I said, oh, no, 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 Lord, you don't want me to teach on end time events. You want Hilton Sutton or somebody else that studied it, not me. Man, I'd taught faith and, and uh, power of words for 25 years. That was my specialty. That was where the anointing yeah. was in my life. Yeah. And I said, now, wait wait a minute, Lord. And, and uh, He said, I want you to teach on end time events. I said, Lord, don't know anything about end time events. And to come find out, that's the reason you want to reason teach on it. Teach because you see, if you <coughs> have preconceived ideas, you're going to go back and rehash the same thing you've been taught over and over and over. But if you don't know anything about it, it's easier for the Holy Spirit to open it up. Mm -hmm. To make a long story short, I said, now, Lord, I need some some insight into this, and I know now I'm willing to do it, but I'm going to make a demand on your promise. In John 16, he says, I would say many things I would say to you, how, but you cannot bear them now. How be it? The Spirit of truth, when He has come, He will teach you all things. He will guide you into all truths, and He will take a mind show it to you. He will show you things to come. That's right. Now I said the end times, talking about things to come. Lord, I'm going to make a demand on this promise right here. I'm willing to do it. I will do it. But you're going to have to show me things to come. I make a demand on the promise. And you know He can? I could sit down and study, and I could study for two hours and get more revelation than I used to get in two years. I'd just get up and walk around the room, sometimes I'd run around the room. i say, my, 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 where did this come from? Where did this come from? And uh, he began to talk about these things, but 
uh, let's get into uh, some of the grammatra of the scriptures. The uh, Hebrew and Greek have numbers associated with their alphabet, you know, and you take, uh, let's just, for instance, move quickly through some of these things that God is revealing as never before. The grammatra are the numerical value of the name of Jesus in the Greek is 888. Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, -S, adds up to 888. But when we, we look at the word, the salvation of God, it adds up, that phrase adds up to the same grammatra, 888, revealing that Jesus is the salvation of God. And that reveals exactly what was said in the book of Acts when, uh, what was it, Simeon that came into the house when he was mm -hmm. being dedicated and said, Now, Lord, let thy servant depart in peace. I've seen the salvation of God. So this confirms through the grammatical, uh, numerical value of letters that Jesus is the salvation of God. But then when you come to salvation of Israel, salvation of Israel, the grammatra for that is 1776. And you know, you think, what has happened here? We thought Jesus would be the salvation of Israel. But see, that is 888 twice, double. <laughs> Now, what's that saying? Oh, it's saying go, that Israel, our most Jews as a whole, will not receive Jesus as their salvation until He appears the second, the second time. time. And that's exactly what the prophetic scriptures reveal. They say they'll look on Him whom they've pierced, and they will mourn for Him as the firstborn. In other words, they'll recognize that when He comes and delivers Israel from certain annihilation, that He is the Messiah, the Lord and Savior. <laughs> I'll tell you, I get so excited oh, about yeah, this. Yeah. I can't all talk. You know, Charles, I, one thing that is important here, I believe, to just inject this in here, is that those of us that have made Jesus the Lord of our lives, and, uh, and He is our Lord and Savior, we don't need these things to prove to us that the Bible's true. We know the Word of no, God No, it's just true. confirmation. It's confirmation yeah. to us and, and fun. We enjoy it. It's fun. But now there's a... There's a final generation that live, that's alive out there right now that is being swamped with every kind of, of ridiculous idea that the devil can come up with. That these things are important for them because their natural carnal thinking is the engine that drives them. I mean, that's what they, they live by all the time. And this is an attention getter to the world. Mm -hmm. Where to us, uh, we enjoy, it's not, it, it doesn't prove that the Word of God is true, it's confirmation to it, but to, th to them, it's an attention grabber, it's an attention getter. And I, I tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm glad of it because He is getting their attention, man, every way you can think he of it. He is getting our attention. There's no doubt about it. But, but the things that the Scripture is revealing today is, is just... Uh, well, it's glorious. I, I, let's talk about the grammatra, uh, the numerical value of the elect. The elect, the grammatra of the elect is 144. Now, let's take Genesis, for instance. Here's, here's something that I ran across the other day. Genesis, the uh, six days of Genesis account, they were 24-hour days, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the Scripture says that a day is with the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years a day, 2 Peter chapter uh, 3, verse 8. Uh, in other words, certain places in the Scripture, a day represents a thousand years. And we know the Genesis account does because it is a uh, composite of the 6,000 years of human history. And at the end of the six days, God saw everything that He had made, and behold, it was very good. If you study that, you'll notice that... Uh, Every day with the exception of one, he said he saw that it was good. But on the sixth day, he said he saw that it was very good. So it's going to be very good for the church at the end of 6,000 years of human history. But now let's take the six 24-hour days. We know there were 24-hour days because it says the evening, morning, first day, and so on. Multiply six times 24. You come up with 144. So that's the number, the grammatical number, or the, the grammatra of the elect. 
144. Now, let's multiply that by a thousand. <laughs> yeah. A day is with the Lord, a thousand years, a thousand years a day. You come up with 144,000 of the elect. <laughs> that is the 144,000 Jewish men that are born again <laughs> oh, after 6,000 years of human God. history. <laughs> Charles, that is, it's, it's phenomenal, isn't it? I mean, it's absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> it's phenomenal what, what is being revealed concerning this, uh, this day in which we live. I mean, in the scripture, been here all these years. That's like, that's like counting the scales on a fish. <laughs> and I mean, it, it is so, it is so mind boggling that anybody could do that, but that God could do it through human beings and that human being not know that he did it. Is what's uh, oh, <laughs> that's just that that's just, that's just plumb out there with me. I love it. This is what God said in Isaiah forty six ten. It says God speaks the end from the beginning. Yeah. Well, the beginning is the Genesis account. So yeah. in the first verse, He reveals the, <laughs> the end right there. I mean, the end of the oh, church Lord. age. The hundred and forty four thousand showing up after six days, and it's just Hallelujah. phenomenal what God Praise revealed. God. So now is the time. Um, I, I'll tell you right now, if, if you're waiting around to get over on the Word of God and get on faith, if, if you're waiting around to, to make Jesus the Lord of your life, if, if you're, you're wasting time, then you're going to be faced with an unusual judgment because for when much is given, much is required. In these last days, a just get by uh, mentality won't work. The, the, the quality of, of faith and the level of your faith commitment that just, just got you by in times past is not going to get you by, particularly in, uh, in, in this year and the coming years to come. No, uh -uh. It, it's not going to work. You're going to have to get in there and you have to do your homework. You're going to have to commit yourself to God and, and, to where you're, you're a, um, a man and woman of the Word and you're going to live by faith the way the Bible says that you ought to be living. And as you do, you're going to get into more glorious things than you've ever gotten into in all your life. I believe that. Cool. This, this is the day to get hooked up. This is the time to get into it. There's going to be a sevenfold increase in the anointing in this end of the church age, the glorious church. Yeah. And we'll get into that in another broadcast. Praise we will not try to tackle that here. <laughs> but you know, that's already started. Yeah. It's already begun. I, I've had the Lord deal with me about it in a number of different ways. He showed me different things. And I've had heard other people talking about it. Savelle's talking about it all the time. Jesse's talking about it all the time. Everybody that's preaching the Word. I talked to Brother Roberts on the telephone the other day. Now, this man just turned 80 years old. He said, Brother Kenneth, I... Uh, he said, I've, I've preached uh, 48 weekends out of this year. <laughs> and he said, uh, I'm not going to quit. He said, I've, my, my bones are on fire. He said, I've, he said, I got more anointing on me than I've ever had in my life. I said, what are you out there preaching? He said, I'm preaching where Moses told Israel and a thousand times more. He said, we've been fooling around with a hundredfold. He said, God's ready for a thousandfold of, of what he's revealing and what he's doing. And he said, it's stronger on me than it's ever been in my life. Man, yeah. I mean, everybody that is sold out to God knows in their heart, boy, the thing is on. It's on. We're in it. We're not waiting for it anymore. We're there. <laughs> Praise God. We're in the middle of it. We're in the middle of it. Um, in the uh, Holy Ghost meeting Brother Hagen had in St. Louis, 1997, Gloria and I were there. And uh, he said, all of these years, he said, we've been knowing that we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. And I know all the the, the first 30 years of this ministry, everywhere I'd preach, I'd finish a meeting. I think, boy, it's a good meeting, wonderful meeting. But it just seemed like we we just didn't quite get there. I just, mm. God, what is it? There's just something about this thing. But about midway through, in fact, it was midway through with me, is on the fourth of July of 1997. We got through at the meeting, 
And, uh, and I got done. I thought, I got there. <laughs> I thought, this is the most wonderful thing I ever experienced in my life. I've been trying to do this for 30 years. What did I do different? I didn't. Every meeting from that time on through 1997, I, I felt like I could have done better. I could have done more, but I was satisfied in my spirit, Charles. Yeah. I felt like, you know, we've arrived somewhere. <laughs> we, we, we've gotten somewhere. I understand what you're talking and, about. And, and, and now I, I realized before the end of 97, I, I believe I realized what it was. Where we've, it's like stepping through a doorway. We stepped through that doorway. Now, uh, just because you got through the doorway, that don't mean you you're you got everything you're going to get because you got the whole room out there in yeah. front of you. But you're in the room. When I started this, we was out in the street, brother, you know, <laughs> headed, headed toward the front door of yeah. the house. But we're, we're in the room and we're headed to fullness. Yeah. Whoa, 1998 is a year of fullness. Praise God. I believe it. God. I believe it. Lord, thank you for this broadcast today. We pray for this television audience. God, help them. Help us all to reach more deeply into your word and into your things and into your affairs and give you more ways to enter into our things and our affairs. And we thank you for it. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Charles and I will be back in just a moment. Let's look over in our Bibles in the book of Exodus, the 16th chapter. Um, Charles, I one of the things that God got my attention with about a year ago in this, and I've been aware of it just every day in my life since, how totally, totally, completely supernatural the Word of the living God is. It woke, that code woke me up. This thing, <laughs> this, this thing is... Uh, I mean, it's right coming and going. It's right frontwards and backwards. I mean, it's up and down. <laughs> up and down. I, I got, I was listening to you, and we're talking about, you were talking about the, uh, uh, and I was aware of this for years and years, that, that we, we had a time span of, a time block that we're dealing with of, approximately 7,000 years. Now, and I was, I was aware of that, and four and two and one. What I had really, what God really woke me up to, the fact that He calls things that be not as though they were, that He doesn't just do that occasionally like we're kind of subject to do. I mean, everything He says is exact to the second. I mean, <laughs> he doesn't have any loose words. Right. And if you wanted to get delivered, it is going to be in sixes and sevens. I mean, <laughs> I don't care if, if, if it was on the first day of creation or in the last millisecond before the rapture, it was going to be divided up in sixes and sevens. That's I right. mean, everything he said was that It woke me up. I mean, it's just like God kind of slapping my spiritual jaws and woke me up to this. <laughs> For instance, in uh, we were talking about this just before we opened, started the broadcast. 16th chapter of Exodus. You know, this is where uh, manna came from heaven feeding the people. Now listen to this. Verse 22, it came to pass that on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread, uh, twice as much bread on the sixth day as, as the other day. And they said, now you can have, you can gather enough for one day, every day, for si but on the sixth day you can gather enough for two days. Now, <laughs> I tell you, 
This is the sixth day that you and I are living in. We're right in this, in this sixth day, and we are the generation that's getting twice as much revelation. I mean, there's been people spent their entire lives digging just as hard as we've dug. They're just as honest as we've been, yeah. and, and God rewarded them for it. Yeah. But on the same amount of effort, on the same amount of faith, and on the same amount of time spent, we're getting twice as much revelation as people did just, just 20 years ago. You know why? I want to know. That's the reason I, <laughs> that's the reason I brought See, it up. We are coming <coughs> closer to the kingdom of light. Mm -hmm. As we come to the end of the age, we're coming closer to the kingdom of light. So your light grows lighter. Gets and brighter the, the closer you yeah, get in it. And the world is coming closer to the kingdom of darkness because they have uh, turned off to God and don't believe the Bible. So their darkness is growing darker. But for the church, the people that really want to believe the Word of God, God has just turned the light up on the Word to where you can read the fine print. Yeah. And Jesus said, there's nothing hid that won't be revealed. That's why the Bible code has come out. And we'll talk about that some more later. But the Bible code is confirming what the Word of God has said for thousands of years, but we couldn't understand it that way. But after the Bible code came out, you can go in the Scriptures and find where it talks about, refers to the Bible code. You know that's what it's alluding to after you know about it. But no one that didn't know about the Bible code or the Torah code would not know that's what it meant. So we are the generation oh my that's God. getting twice as much revelation oh as any other generation in history. You know, I remember you and I talking about um, in 1975, I believe it was, 75, 76, right along in there. Um, we sat down together just talking about the Word of God one day, and, and you drew on a, on a yellow tablet for me, you said, I want to show you what the Lord is, is talking to me about. And you drew that upside down triangle. triangle and the, of the, the, end. the point of it came down like this. And you said, now, Kenneth, look, if we were up here at the top of this triangle, which is broad across the top here like this, and we start down this way, and this was in the light of God, this, you'd be doing uh, pretty well here. But if you keep coming straight down, you get out and away from the point here, you're going to get out here where it's, uh, there's not much yeah. light. But if you stay in the center of this thing, he said it, it just keeps getting lighter and more brilliant and more brilliant and more brilliant and more brilliant as you go. Yeah. That's, that's like where a, we are. Like a big room, see. You have enough light for a big room uh, sufficient, but if you pull it down to a smaller room, you've got intense light. Yeah. And that, inside that triangle was light. Outside the triangle was, was darkness, dark. and there was a line came down the center, line upon line, precept upon precept, what the Spirit of God said to me. It said, uh, uh, as you come to the, the bottom of the triangle of the end, time grows faster and closer, and light becomes more intense. By the time you get to the bottom of that, where all of this light in this triangle is into that little point, you've got a laser. Yeah. And... Uh, this is what we've come to. We're coming, all time has to pass through this triangle of the end, and we're right in the bottom of the funnel of that triangle right it now. It is coming to a definite point, yeah. in a point in time when we're dumped out into the new millennium. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. Not a good word, dumped out, but we are ushered in yeah. to a new millennium. Well, dumped out works for me. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, man. I, I'm, I, Charles, when, when we when we were little kids, you know, and my my grandmother and granddaddy lived 350 miles away from us, and boy, I tell you, it's high old time when I got to go to Papa's <laughs> house, you know, because he lived out there on that farm ranch, and 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 oh, I loved it out there. And that's where I like to be. But man, to spend. Uh, seven or eight hours in the back seat of that old car <laughs> just to get there, it seemed like three days to me. And I'd think, is this thing ever going to get there? And you, you know how a kid will do. We there yet, Daddy? Are we there yet? He gets so tired of hearing me there yet. He said, you will know when we get there. And I shut up and sat down. <laughs> and, um, and finally, you could look up 
And, and I'd know when we turn off on that old dirt road, boy, it ain't far from here, you know. And, and you go to getting excited when the road got rough. And you start seeing signs. Oh, <laughs> I tell you. And, and, I, and, the, and the la I'm telling you, the last 18 months, in my insides, oh, I tell you, I don't have to ask Jesus anymore. Are we there yet, Lord? Are we there yet, Lord? We're there. We are there. Praise <clears throat> God. And it is I'm telling you, it is imperative for you, whoever you are, to get your Bible and get in it and stay in it in these last days and let God teach you and train you and raise you up. I, I'll tell you that we're in for the we're in for the ride of our lives. Praise God. Wagon wheel of faith won't work in a jet age. No. 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 <laughs> you no. get behind the power curve yeah. <clears throat> real quick. But now notice what Jesus prayed in Matthew the sixth chapter. He said uh, in verse nine, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Now when is thy kingdom going to come? His kingdom comes and during the millennial reign of mm -hmm, Christ, mm -hmm. comes to the earth. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is when the millennial reign will take place. God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, give us this day our daily bread. Now, he's talking about daily bread. They were fed with bread from heaven, manna. Jesus was the Word. He said, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. Jesus was the Word personified. So this Word, this daily bread, is the manna from heaven, which is the revelation of God's Word that He's given to yes. us. Give us this day our daily bread. In Jesus' day, they did not need the revelation that we need in this day, and it was not given. They did not understand it. It was in the Word, but they didn't understand it. But we are the generation that God is revealing uh, the end time events because we're the generation that will experience these Praise events. God. Now notice he said, lead us not into temptation. Well, he said, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now that'll preach. <laughs> we, we, he forgives us our debts as we forgive those that offend us. That's a strong point. Some of you in unforgiveness, you better forgive because you get forgiven the way you are forgiving others. And you ain't got time to play with that anymore. No. Now, now look, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. What evil? The evil of the tribulation period. Hallelujah. Deliver us from temptation. Temptation means a time of pressure forcing people to make a decision to uh, make them reveal what they really are. Say that again, man, that's strong. Temptation, one of the meanings of temptation is forcing people to reveal what they really are. Temptation to a man that has made a decision to serve God, it would run off of you like water off a duck's back. But temptation tests and trials and troubles that's coming during the tribulation period is to cause people to show what they really are. Why would the church go through this? We've already made the decision, see. So, well, Charles, this is happening all over the world right now. I mean, it's happening every day. Yeah. Um, the, there's, more, there's more pressure on people right now than ever has been before, and it hadn't even started good yet. That's right. No, we hadn't got into it yet. No. Really. Just in the, the fringe. But that pressure, that pressure pushes a man to reveal what he actually is in his heart. Yeah. He can't cover it up. He is so driven to act on his flesh. Well, what's in his heart is going to come out of his mouth and in his actions yeah. also. Yeah. And that's why a man has to be changed before he, uh, you know, leopard can't change his spots. But the blood of Jesus can change yeah. him. <laughs> yeah. From the inside out. So, so what we have here in, in Jesus teaching His disciples is a message for this generation. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, the evils, the temporal evils that will come on the world during the tribulation period called Jacob's trouble. It's, it's called the 70th week of Daniel. Now, here, lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil, and give us this day our daily bread. Now connect that with, with this scripture. It came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread. Now, I, I, I would just back up here in the 16th verse, and it said they gathered 
uh, omer. And it have a little number three bite. Up here it says uh, six pints. <laughs> so on the sixth day, they got six pints. <laughs> now God uses numbers. Now we're not talking about numerology, folks. We're talking no, no. about biblical numerics and how God gives revelation through the way numbers are used in the Bible. So there's, they got six pints on the sixth day. Now come over here to the verse 29. No, no, verse 23. He said unto them, This is that which the Lord has said, Tomorrow is... Well, back up. We've got to read verse 22. Yeah. And it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread. Uh, and then now, verse 23. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord hath said. This is what Moses said to them. This is that which the Lord has said, Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, this, after the sixth day, tomorrow is the rest. Now, in the scripture here, I-S, is, is in large, bold print. In the Hebrew, that is very significant. Places in the scripture where there was a little something in the Hebrew that it meant something beyond what it normally means. Tomorrow is the rest. So at the end of the sixth day, tomorrow is the rest. The next day is the day of rest. And that, I believe that's what he's referring to here. Now I come down to verse 29. And he says, uh, See, for the Lord hath given you Sabbath, therefore he giveth you the six days, the bread for two days. And verse 30 so the people of God rested on the seventh day. Praise God. There is a rest for the people of God. Now that's what I was talking about earlier. That God, I mean, you know, if we'd have been doing this, I mean, we, we'd have started out with three or four days here and four or five days there and, yeah. and, you know, one or two days here. But God is so exact and so right on time and so right on target all the time that His Word is so obviously His that you take what Jesus said, man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, yes. that we can, um, well, now let me back up just a notch here because I, I, I thought of this when you were talking about it a while ago. We've been born into the most dangerous generation in the history of the human race. Yeah. You and I live in the jet age. We live in the atomic age. We live in the neutron age or whatever else is out there to kill you. Mm -hmm. I mean, to the point where it's just uh, um, mind-boggling how many ways you... Perilous time. Yeah. <laughs> but we've got twice as much of everything that every other generation used to be delivered, we've got twice as much. And if God didn't know, I mean, if God didn't believe we had what it take to make it during this dangerous generation, He'd have had us born some other time, Charles. <laughs> I mean, here we are in the midst of the most dangerous time, but this, this is the biggest time. This is the most powerful time. This is the time to have more fun you ever had in your life. We're experiencing it? what the prophets of old saw afar off, but never experienced. Yeah. <laughs> and said they'd give everything they had just to get over in there in that time. I just know that David's looking over the banister of time and said, get them, boy, get them. I <laughs> wish I was in he there. Said, they're the ones. They're the ones. <laughs> yeah, look at them go. Oh, I wish we'd been there with them and all that. I mean, this is the time to get into the Word like you've never been in the Word before. This is the time for fullness. The, uh, the 1998 is a year of fullness, a fullness of God, fullness of revelation, fullness of faith, fullness of healing and deliverance. We are going to see things. You're going to be sitting there on television to see things that you think, dear God, I didn't think I'd ever be seeing that on television. You're going to say that before this year's over with. Yeah. In both ways, yeah. both in a disastrous way right. and in some things that you're going to see certain telecasters come on there and say that you never dreamed you'd ever hear them say, but they're going to be saying and doing things before the end of this year is up that uh, you'd, you would have sworn you'd never see on national television. 
Boy, Thank this you. is a time to be alive. Yeah. It is. Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you to reveal to people watching this broadcast today. Reveal to them. Uh, Lord, help them make decisions right this minute that will bring them closer into the things of God instead of taking them further away from the things of God. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now you listen to me. If you've never made Jesus Christ of Nazareth the Lord of your life, don't put this off anymore. I watched a secular television broadcast yesterday evening. I, I, I watched a good bit of it because it was, it was talking about the same things that we're talking about now. It was talking about them in a questioning kind of way. Can this really be true? Uh, they were given the Bible a lot of respect. I mean, they referred to it as the Holy Bible and so forth, but they talked about the, the myths of other religions and, the, and, and all these kind of things. And um, could this be that this is the time of the end? Well, yeah, it's the time of the end. There's no question about it. They're talking about asteroids hitting the earth. All of that stuff is going to happen. There's no question about that. But my friend, let me, let, me, let me encourage you with something here. What the world sees as the time of the end is our time of the beginning. beginning. It's the end of an age. Yeah, it is. And to us, whoa, this is, this, is the, this is the most glorious time there's ever been. Now, Jesus is the Lord. He is the Savior. He is the director of the heavens and the earth. He is head of all things. Now you can take that by faith now and get in on his glorious time, get in on his, his part of it, or you can wait uh, until the end of all this thing and have it crammed down your throat and you wish you had accepted it back when, uh, when Brother Copeland and Brother Caps was talking to you about it. And now is the time. Don't put it off one more second. You say, Brother Copeland, how would I do that? Just simply like this. Jesus Christ went to the cross to keep you from having to go to hell. Jesus of Nazareth was raised from the dead and is the living God right now. You accept that and make Him your Lord, and then you walk in His way and He'll begin to open up the Word of God to you. Like we said yesterday, forwards, backwards, inside, out, and your eyes begin to open and bug out in these last days. And you can say, glory to God, look at this. And people around you say, what did you say? I didn't see anything. That's like you used to talk. But you can just walk in the things of God like never before and be victorious in it and things of disaster going on right around you and you be what? Saved, delivered, set free in the name of Jesus. 